This video is sponsored by TryTreats.com. Use my code KevinCoolX for 15% off. Links in the description and pinned comment, but more on them later. Man, when I'm looking at this calendar, it makes me wonder what's going on. So we're going to take a look at the updates that we've had for the first four months of this game being out. And it's 343 living up to the live service that they promised us in the first four months of Halo Infinite. Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I would honestly say right now that this right now that we're feeling is like the true content drought. It's way more than what it was during like the content drought that we had before, like those monthly blog updates back in like 2019. That was pretty dang rough. Even during 2020, 2021, like that whole era was like pretty rough as well. I mean, we got those monthly blog updates, but if the blog update wasn't really anything substantial, it felt like we we're really kind of just like making things up for Halo content and well, we kind of feel like we're doing that again. And that's mainly because we're not really getting like the live service that we were promised by 343. And this recent calendar that was posted up on Reddit kind of shows why. So this calendar right here shows you the first four months of this game's multiplayer being available for us to play around. So we had the release of the multiplayer on November 15th. It was fantastic. Beta, as they quoted, but it was basically the functional release of the game. And then you had just a few days later, the 50 game per XP and then the XP boost time being doubled, which was like fantastic. That's a really quick turnaround releasing the game on Monday and already doing drastic changes like that by Friday. Well, things were looking great. Now, I also wouldn't expect to see like huge updates or anything changing drastically after the first like week or so when it comes to at least like gun balance or any kind of systems because they want to see how community feedback gets before making any drastic changes. I was actually, actually John, honestly surprised that this update came just a few days after the initial release. Like that was great. And then essentially two weeks after that, larger XP payouts with the first seven games that you play. And I think right now the XP progression going through the battle pass is in a pretty good state right now where, where you feel like every time you log in, you're making some progress where before it was a super grind then we had the official release of the campaign and multiplayer on december 8th and then literally the next day btb breaks and after that like that was a whole like section of the multiplayer just completely not playable whatsoever which was definitely rough because i love playing btb but then the next week you had the playlist update that brought team slayer fiesta swine all those other games that was fantastic and then the next day after that a hot fix so we're getting like relatively consistent updates when it comes to halo infinite though this hot fix was more kind of like a quality of life back end kind of fix nothing really anything that was drastically changing the game to make it like play or feel any different then soon after that hot fix was updated they went on break which totally deserved Halo Infinite's launch was honestly like a pretty good game like it was you know functional the XP payouts were changed quite drastically which was fantastic the campaign was great the multiplayer was fun and we're having a good time and then that's when like things kind of start feeling a little different though because once we go over to January you can see that there was literally just one update which was a big one it was the shop model change but basically over the course of an entire month plus more then uh, we had one singular update and then the next day was the BTB attempt and that didn't fix anything. So this BTP was broken this entire time. I understand they were on break, but we're still out here playing the game and it's like the same thing continuously the whole time. Like this is when I was like, okay, once they get back into the studio, things are gonna be changing. We're gonna get those updates like we were having previously, like almost once a week, we're getting like a significant update, but not so much. Then two weeks later, we had BTB actually fixed. And then we had a matchmaking update, which is kind of like more of a quality of life kind of improvement thing. I mean, then a few weeks after that, rank reset. And then after that, we had the mid-season update, which is rather underwhelming. Now, we, after they came back, we see like, yeah, almost once a week, we're getting some form of update, which is great. But the thing is that uh, most of these updates are kind of just like back-end quality of life improvements and nothing really that's like substantial that makes people go like, oh my God, I need to jump back in and play some Halo. A lot of these are really small incremental changes, which some of them were crucial, like the shop changes, the XP gains and things like that. But what I'm talking about is like some real significant things that make you people want to jump back into play, like say like a new map being added into season one, because well, you know, season one's going to last us twice as long as a regular season. I would kind of hope that like I was having big hopes, actually, that we would have at least like a mid season update with like a new map and maybe a new mode or something like that. Just kind of like freshen things up a little bit, but that doesn't seem to really be the case. And it looks like we're not really gonna get much until season two. Now I know we're all really hungry for any form of Halo news and information, but you know what, one way to help out with that hunger? 
TryTreats.com. There you can explore beyond your borders what tasty snacks other countries are enjoying. Such countries like France, Croatia, Korea, Australia, South Africa, Canada, Mexico, and so many more. This summer, check out the country of South Korea. <laughs> Now another really cool thing about this, not just some awesome tasty treats, but you also get some cards and information about the country and stuff as well. Also about the snack because a lot of it's written in Korean. Well, I can't read Korean. And you know me, I'm all about the details. <laughs> He said it! He said it! So if you're looking to broaden your snacky borders or missing one of your favorite treats from the country you used to live in, TryTreats.com has got you covered. If you're interested, check out the link in the pinned comment down below, guys. And if you're looking to subscribe to one of their boxes, use code KevinCoolX for 15% off your purchase. When you do, it helps support the channel as well. If you have any questions, check out their links in the description of this video as well for their socials. And thank you, TryTreats.com, for your support. And let's get right back into the video here. And 343 even stated they do recognize that some weapons need buffs and nerfs and things like that within the sandbox as it sits right now. They're definitely looking at the Mangler. They've already mentioned about the Plasma Pistol having better tracking on players but it's been four months they know it needs to be improved why hasn't that been improved so are we really gonna have to wait like six months to any form of a sandbox update which like obviously i would say that the halo fitted sandbox is good right now it certainly has room for improvement but you know at launch it still worked out rather well i'm still having fun playing the game and yeah, you know, waiting until like a major season update to do any kind of sandbox updates makes sense with a normal cadence of three months, unless something gets completely broken. But we're gonna have to wait six months with the initial release of the game. And just like, it just feels like we just haven't really gotten much of that service that we're talking about. A lot of things that do get changed are kind of just like tweaking numbers and backend quality of life improvements and nothing really significant that really make people like excited about a new update or something changing within Halo Infinite. I mean, like we have been getting these events throughout this weeks, right? So we've had like the Tenrai event, we had the Winter Contingency, then we had the Cyber Showdown, and the rumors have that March 8th will be the release of the Tactical Ops, which actually has some really awesome customization, which we've covered in multiple videos in the past. Which all of those see like a nice little boost in player base, but nothing really anything that really makes it so that people wanna hop back in and play because, you know, there were like fun little additional kind of things, but nothing really that would make people excited about playing Halo Infinite again, especially since like the way the challenges work, especially that like it feels very much like a chore to try to complete these events rather than like, hey, you're hopping in playing some brand new experience you never really played before, especially with the tactical ops. They also the leaks and rumors saying that this can be just multiple variations of SWAT, which I'm like, dude, that's just not enough to get people excited to come in and play Halo. You need to bring in something new and fresh like we did with the Cyber Showdown with the attrition that was a really fun mode it's just a shame that it's gone i feel like 343 would really benefit from having like a bi-weekly playlist update where have like one rotational playlist where like you throw game modes in like attrition or swat or even fiesta and things like that just like something just kind of help mix it up give you a reason why to hop in and play it's just that Right now, it's, things are just feeling very samey right now. I mean, like, even the release of Halo Infinite wasn't really that much of, like, a revolutionary release. Like, yeah, going, like, multiplayer, live service, free-to-play, revolutionary, the way they're doing the battle pass is revolutionary as well and then having that fantastic campaign which we talked about with hidden Xperia. if you missed that video definitely want to go check it out was actually awesome so the first couple months things were feeling pretty great but now we're kind of like feeling pretty stale but like nothing really new came to halo infinite like we haven't really experienced any kind of like game mode that would be like oh this is a like halo infinite specific mode like, i've read a lot of your comments on my videos guys and i've seen that a lot of people requested modes like infection griff ball and also having firefight coming back which would be great but those game modes i feel like really rely on forge to be something that's really playable and fun and even then those game modes like we've all played those modes like a million times over like i just really don't think like modes like that would bring people back to halo infinite because unless you're like a infection player or you're a rift ball player or a firefight player that's gonna be awesome for you but i think for the gaming community at large for halo infinite isn't really gonna be like that's the game mode that's gonna bring people back the one mode i'm really excited about is the mode that's being referred to as codename tatanka by certain affinity which certain affinity has worked with halo for many many years i believe they were a team behind uh, dominion which is a fan favorite mode from halo 4 and they do state here that there's some very interesting things about this mode though this windows central report here to say that it's several months out at this point 
and is designed to be more of a newcomer friendly experience that isn't demanding competitively than existing multiplayer modes like Big Team Battle and Arena. It's also intended to entice users who are typically aren't interested in Halo, potentially targeting gamers of Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone, as well as Apex Legends. Now, I don't think it necessarily means, oh my god, we're getting Battle Royale in Halo Infinite. I think it just means more that like they're trying to grab those players who tend to like those kind of big modes because that's the majority of where the first person shooter fan base is at right now. So it would make sense that 343 would try to pull those players from that audience. And what kind of like newcomer friendly mode would really do that? I, I have hope, high hopes that Certain Infinity can pull off something awesome. They've done it previously. But even then, this is months out of the way. So what are we gonna do in the meantime? In season two, I'm not expecting a whole lot besides like a new battle pass, maybe a new mode. But I feel like it's gonna be more just kind of the same kind of stuff like we had with season one, but with season two. But don't get me wrong, I think season two is gonna be a great addition to Halo Infinite. I really do feel like right now where we are in Halo Infinite status right now, it's like we're in a pretty good lull right now, or basically I feel like we can only go up from here. And right now there's just so much uncertainty with Halo Infinite because we haven't gotten that roadmap to kind of expect to see what's gonna be happening throughout the year of Halo Infinite. Is it a game that's gonna be something you're gonna be worth jumping into and keep playing to kind of keep those skills sharp? I think people just want to have that feeling of like something's happening and we know that it's coming kind of experience. But like this is kind of like what we had with MCC when it came to PC that like we knew that these games were coming. So it kind of kept us excited to play and keep going because we know that like, oh, just in a few months, we're gonna get Halo 2 and then we're gonna get Halo 3 and then we're gonna get Halo 4. But then we're also gonna play a lot of other great experiences on along the way. I think people are just kind of desperate for some consistent communication. Like I know like Destiny, I believe that he's doing the TWABs, the This Week in Destiny stuff where, yeah, most of it's kind of like, you know, mundane kind of stuff. But at least you're like, you kind of know like stuff is happening with the game that you're playing. Right now, we don't really have that experience. We just like, we're waiting for them to get the fixes come in so then we can enjoy the game more or waiting for that content to come in. But when is that content coming? What kind of content is it? We don't have any clue. We're just waiting on that roadmap that's why a lot of people have been saying it's a live service without the service because we don't know what our service is going to be. I feel like right now, like I'm sitting at a restaurant and I ate the appetizer and it was fantastic. I'm waiting for my main course and the waiter goes, well, it's coming. We just need a little more time. Sorry about that. I'm like, okay, totally understandable. Totally makes sense. You know, some more, more moments go by and then we go like, hey, like, where's the food at? And they go, oh no, it's coming. Like we just need actually a little bit more time. You know, something's changed. We, we prioritize things like, okay. Um, you know, I'm patient enough, but then, you know, let me know, like, am I gonna have to wait like 15, 20, 30 minutes before my food? That's why people want this roadmap so badly is because they just want to know like, okay, what can we expect throughout the year? When can I expect to jump back in to play Halo and have some more fun? But I guarantee you guys, once we get that roadmap, once we get some more information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Check out the videos on the channel right here if you missed any content from me recently. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.